Heat it, heat it, heat it. Heat it. Heat it. Heat it. In Ark Knights, operators have unique and special kits often curated to give them niches or unique tricks that set them apart from their contemporaries. Ark Knights allows staying power with its cast of playable characters amongst other gacha games that have a litany of units designed to be rolling stock, aka meaningless garbage designed as nothing more than cast bloat for completionists or whales to collect trophies. Today's topic concerns Besieger Snipers and their very interesting branch. Rosa and Typhon, especially the latter, are paragons of the game's modern meta but also represent how poorly the class was initially designed. There are currently five Besiegers, in order, Rosa, Tatafons, Arado, Totter, and Typhon. This video was inspired by Dr. Silvergun and his brief discussion on the paradoxical nature of a unit like Totter faces, and this can extend to Tatafons and Arado too. He talks about how Totter's class, the Besieger, is meant to prioritize the heaviest enemy, but because his talent makes him unique against invisible enemies, there will be situations where his trait either overrides his talent or he's unable to make the most of his kit to get the maximum DPS. In Arc Knights, it's important for players to make the most of their operator's kits. A unit like the Fortress Defender, Ashlock, has her second skill remove her ability to block enemies, which can make her skill inferior to Horn Skill 3. However, you can still make strategic usage of Ashlock in a map where losing her block count doesn't matter, and she can still be useful thanks to her already high attack and decent attack speed with S2. The main issue with the non-Rosa Besiegers is how poorly they were initially designed and put into a branch that didn't consider why Rosa's kit works and theirs don't. So, let's get into Besiegers, Paragons in a Sea of Mediocrity. Disclaimer, please assume all units are E2, level 1, skill level 7. Modules and masteries will be discussed as we go. For starters, Besiegers' main trait is targeting the heaviest enemy in range. Enemies that come to mind that are both heavy and actually have 3 plus weights, because some of them are exceptions like the Junkman or the Possessed Soldiers, include Heavy Defenders, pretty much all bosses, Gorilla Shield Guards, and many large event-specific enemies, such as a Fury from Who is Real, as a random example. It should also be noted that while drones are exempt from shift rules from Puller and Pusher Specialists, the Chapter 8 Artillery Targeter has 4 weight, making it afraid of Rosa's power. So, let's get into the units in order of release date. Let's start with Natalia Andrevia Rostova, or Rosa, the original Besieger. She was released during the Survivor of Ursus mini-event and subsequent banner as a 6-star in the first Besieger Sniper. She is of the Ursi race, and while burdened by the events of Chernobog, she strives to amend her wrongs and move on with life with vitality. Her second talent is negligent to the overall discussion, so we'll gloss over it. Her first talent lets her ignore 60% enemy defense if they are 3 plus weight. This right here is Rosa's bread and butter. Any enemy with 3 plus weight, no matter how strong, will have 60% of their defense crunched, which is an insane amount. With her S2, she can just pog and delete 2 enemies at once, and with S3, hits up to 4 enemies at M3, allowing her to rip anything she wants to shreds. To shreds, you say? Ooh. Rosa is capable of dishing out some insane numbers and makes a great first impression for the Besieger branch. Capable of attacking multiple enemies in different ways and having insane attack skill with her 60% defense ignore makes her perfect for boss slaying and heavy elites alike. Not bad for a girl who basically modified a small scale siege engine, according to her file. Next up is Arianrod Blodewid, better known as Tadafons. Tadi is a 5 star Besieger sniper that were released during Walk in the Dust Spanner. Tadafons is a Vivir from Victoria with an ancestral rivalry with the Sarcas. She wears her heart on her sleeve as much as she uses her intellect, with great vigor. Too bad her kit doesn't reflect this display of fervor. Tadafons' talent increases her damage to Sarcas enemies by 150%, which is quite good, allowing it to be a playful addition alongside Mudrock's talent which lets her take 40% less damage from Sarcas enemies. Tadafons' skills allow her to do impressive damage, but she pales in comparison to Rosa due to her hyper specialization on Sarkis enemies. Her best skill, her S2, lets her do an impressive 210% damage with a small additional AoE attack. Good for groups, but ultimately the AoE doing less than 100% damage means it isn't as impressive as an artilleryman sniper like Meteorite with her S1. Additionally, her S1 provides interesting utility. The increased taunt and defense down would allow allies with range attacks to single in on a specific foe for 20 seconds, which I think has great potential. In a stage like SNS5, this could be really useful if you want to take down the boss, the end speaker, against his horde of small fry. I think she still leaves much to be desired, especially for a girl who could punch someone into submission. <gasps> Next up is the Gorilla Manone fighter bard slash perfumer, admirer, no not perfume, but Lena the perfumer slash Paul's friend disappointing her. Arado. Arado dropped during CC9 Deepness as the Welfare Operator. Similar to Tadafons, she has next to nothing to do with the event she dropped in, and Arado uses a harp as her fantasy procedure weapon of choice, quite a contrast to the slightly more practical weapons Rosa and Tadafons utilize. Arado's kit revolves around sleeping enemies. She can attack them and ignore 50% of their defense when they're asleep. 
It's similar to Rosa's with a sleep requirement, so she synergizes well with EP Knights alongside Blemishine, Kafka, Black Knight, Iris Sora, and the Terror Research Commission. Her S1 puts enemies to sleep for a few seconds, allowing allies in EP Knights the ability to chip in and she herself can get a shot in. Paired with Telopsis and the right setup, you can permastall enemies to sleep. Meanwhile, her S2 provides her with a decent attack and attack speed up, and she also prioritizes sleeping enemies. Her kit is ultimately very decent and pairs well with other units of her niche, and you can pull some jank with this kit, but the main issue is the amount of setup required to do something like this, which most players simply don't have the resources or time to do. She has a good meme utility, but this doesn't translate well into higher end content without careful planning to specifically use her. And sleep isn't a susceptibility you can use on most difficult bosses. And for good reason. After them is Totter. No, not Totter, but Totter, like Tater Tots. Totter released during the Chapter 11 banner as a 4 star procedure sniper, and he actually has plot relevance to Chapter 11 as a mercenary hired by Allardale Cumberland to assist her in finding the size of kings. Ultimately, after the conflict, he decides to live in seclusion and works of Rhodes Island. Totter's kit is about targeting invisible enemies. This is good because now we have a 7th unit capable of attacking and revealing invisible enemies. And for a 4 star, this is a super unique kit. For his talent, Totter gets a notable attack boost when invisible enemies are in range. Both his skills give him the ability to target multiple enemies, making him quite good in events like Near Light or Starfolio Navis, and he can be generally good with attack speed buffs in IS or SSS. The main issue is the number of enemies that have visibility are under 3 weight. For the most part, the benchmark procedures want to reach is an enemy with 3 plus weight because with the module they benefit from the 115% attack boost. But only 3 enemies with invisible abilities, the Familia Cleaners, Shai Haozong Ringleaders, and Deacon Brecher are actually 3 plus weight, and can be attacked by Totter for his maximum damage. You would think the Dublin Capane Shadowblade, a main story chapter 9 enemy, would constitute for this, but he's 2 weight and his defender buddy is 4 weight with increased taunt level, so Totter gets a damage boost, but without skills attacks the companion defender, wasting a lot of DPS and value out of his kit. This was what was discussed by Dr. Silvergun in one of his showcase videos. The main issue with the non-Rosa procedures is how they involve separate niches to break into. Sarcas, sleeping, and invisible enemies respectively. This isn't bad per se, especially if they can make the most of their niche, but there are a lot of situations where players would just opt for raising Rosa because of the absurd numbers she can dish out. Rosa doesn't need to worry about any requirements to ignore defense, nor does she pit herself into any niche of enemies. She just outright ignores defense across the board for all of enemies, and her skills complement this. So, lastly, we have Typhon, the sarcast, and in air quotes, child of Valarquin. Typhon released with the mini event Skullgren, Swatter, and Drom, or Sleep in the Shadow Trees. She is also one of the leads in IS-4, Expeditioner's Joe Killer Marker. Typhon has Defense Ignore with her first talent that ramps up, and her second talent gives her an attack up of 160% and slows enemies for 3 seconds on the first time hitting them. This already gives her insane potential to begin ramping up with her first talent while essentially having Risk of Rain Crowbar-like effect on the first hit. While the second talent goes away for the second attack afterward, it refreshes for every single enemy she does the first attack on. Super sufficient! Her second skill is her bread and butter, similar to Rosa S2, she gets an attack up and multi-target, but unlike her, Typhon S2 can double hit one enemy in range, similar to Totter S2. This makes her an effective boss killer, as well as damaging some of the bulkiest elites like Lone Trail, Screen Guard Defenders, or the Traffic Control Towers. The stun chance is also effectively doubled with one enemy in range. With her S3, she marks the heaviest enemy in range and launches an arrow rain that attacks random enemies in the marker's range. If there's only one enemy, she just straight up attacks them 4 times for 160% extra damage. The marker follows enemies until the enemy dies or she runs out of ammo. The marker even follows him through tunnels, so not even 616 Frost Nova is safe. In essence, Typhon does a much better job compared to the non-Roses in having no restricted niche, so she can ramp up damage with her defense ignore and nuke the enemy of her skills. Her S2, and especially her S3, make her a perfect boss killer, and she can practically solo up to two or more lanes depending on the enemy density. She's perfect for stepping out large enemies in a crowd. Rosa and Typhon are clearly the favorite operators in the branch because their trait and talent actually synergize quite well. In situations where you typically want more TPS, why wouldn't you pick them? Even in their niches, Toddy and Totter do middling damage oftentimes, especially Tottafons. Totter is held back a little by being a 4 star, but has lots of chances to shine against the weaker defensive invisible enemies that can pose a threat, or an offensive threat such as the Shai Haozong ringleaders. Arado is an interesting case because she essentially makes sleeping enemies for her to attack, which is pretty good. She even has a defensive ignore talent, so she fits the procedure branch pretty decently. But her biggest problem is relying on her fellow sleep night operators to do consistent defense ignore. She just becomes a more problematic Rosa if you don't have any of the aforementioned niche team raised. I also don't think the modules really help the non-Rosas very well. 
All of them get the X module, which increases their damage against 3 plus weight enemies, which has been the benchmark we've used in this video. Rosa's module upgrades let her do an additional instance of damage based on 60% of her attack, which is pretty whatever with normal attacks, but does a lot when skills are active. It's a lot of useful extra damage. Tadafonts gets extra damage on Sarkaz, Arado gets 60% defense ignore when attacking EP enemies, Totter gets a substantial attack boost against invisible enemies from 17% to 27%, and Typhon gets 60% defense ignore. For Rosa, Totter, and Typhon, their modules help give them increased damage in varying ways that can be substantiated thanks to their kits. Tadafon still struggles from a lack of meaningful damage when the enemy is in Sarkaz, and Arado gets 60% defense ignore but still requires a sleep team. I don't think these modules do justify all the work you're putting in for most of the procedures. Rosa was clearly the unit made with this class in mind. Meanwhile, Tati, Arado, and Totter feel like afterthoughts when they should have modified kits or be different classes entirely. Typhon is 100% the only competition of Rosa, but that's only because of how general her kit is. You can use her in CC, you can use her in Design of Strife, you can use her in Integrated Strategies, Annihilation, anywhere. This also shows how Rosa, as useful as she is, is going to inevitably pale to Typhon eventually in the metagame that is slowly power creeping her out with units that provide better stats like Typhon's insane S3 numbers. I think procedures would be better if the trait was specifically giving them damage based on the enemy weight but removed the prioritization and let the talent speak for themselves. That way, Tadafons and Totter can perform much better against their preferred enemy type. Perhaps give them an extra damage for lighter enemies like 105% and 110% for enemies of 1-2 to two weight, cap it at 150 extra damage for weight class of 10 or higher for instance. It would give them a better skill ceiling to damage enemies and bosses far above their class. Well, that's all for today. Remember to stay breezy, y'all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.